Hello, and welcome to another video. Uh, this is one I've been planning to do for a while, but <laughs> I guess I never got around to it. Uh, today I'm going to explain the basics of virtual environments in Python and why you should always use them. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so first I'll explain the concept of a virtual environment. Uh, a virtual environment allows you to install Python packages in an isolated fashion. So Normally, if you would just run like pip install on your computer, it would install them globally. Um, or if you use pip install dash user, you could do it locally, but um, you'll install stuff globally to your operating system. And uh, this can lead to a number of different problems. The first being that uh, a lot of many modern Linux operating systems are based around Python packages. Like they have, they have tools and other stuff that are installed that are using Python. Like if we look deep package dash L grep Python three dash something. Yeah, like all of all of these packages are part of the operating system and they're installed in the system. Now some of these are like actually Python itself, but you can see like parts of Debian are implemented in Python. Uh, we have like HTTP two HTTP lib two for some reason. No, there's a whole bunch of like Python three packages that make up the actual operating system. And when you install to your system, you can end up in a number of, you know, <laughs> unfortunate places. Uh, the, the first being that you can't really change. Well, you can change, but it'll break stuff. Uh, you can't change the system packages that are installed to your Python. So you often have to build your application if you're using the system Python, which I'm going to hopefully convince you that you should never use it. Um, but if you are using the st system Python, you have to kind of use the particular packages that ship with your operating system. And depending on the version of your operating system, these packages might be severely old. Now this this is a relatively new release of Ubuntu. And so, you know, like the packages are relatively up to date. Um, but if you go back, you know, only two years, you'll be getting Python 3.6, I think it was 1.9. And this broke like literally everyone um, when several packages required newer versions of six. But anyway, uh, using the system packages is often a pain because you're forced into those particular versions. Uh, the other thing is if you manage to somehow upgrade some of those, you may break your operating system because it depends on a particular version of those packages. Uh, so generally, it's just not a good idea to mess with the system packages. And I'd even extend this further into a Docker file. Like in a Docker file, yeah, you're a little bit more isolated and you don't really care about an operating system running in the background, but you can still run into these same sets of problems with conflicting system packages. But anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about virtual environments. Uh, we're gonna be talking about two major tools to build virtual environments today. Um, you could we could also talk about Conda, but I don't really know much about Conda, and personally, I don't really like it. But anyway, that's 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 a whole different discussion. Uh, but we're being, we're gonna be talking about virtual env, the tool called virtual env, and we're gonna be talking about vm, which is uh, the standard library version of virtual env. Uh, and I'm going to compare and contrast them. But before we do that, let's just show how to make a virtual env and how to activate a virtual env. Uh, and this is going to be relatively the same in both of vm and virtual env. I'm going to do one on one side, one on the other. Um, and we're going to use time here just so I can show you the first difference between virtual env and vm. Uh, so we're just going to call this one v1 or vm1. Sure. And we're going to make one with vm on the other side. Time Python 3 dash m vm vm2. Now I had to install the virtual env package on my on my computer. Uh, this is actually installed in my home directory, so it's not um, it's not globally installed, but uh, it's actually installed in a virtual env, which is a little bit cheeky. <laughs> Um, but this this will be the first difference between the two that you'll notice. You'll notice that virtual env is significantly faster than running the vm module, uh, and this has to do with some of the ways that virtual env caches some packages, but also avoids like running pip or reaching out to the internet or other stuff like that. So virtual env is a lot faster. But this is the basics for creating a virtual env. The next thing that you'll do is you'll activate the virtual env on POSIX-like platforms. This involves using the source command or the more portable version of source that's just called dot. I'm going to type source just because uh, it's easier to, to remember what it's doing. Uh, and you'll do source uh, the virtual env path slash bin slash activate. And this will make your virtual env activated. This will set up this PS1, which 
you know, makes it easier to know what virtual env you're in. It'll also set some environment variables. The first is this virtual underscore env, which is just a uh, path to this. This doesn't really do anything. It's mostly so that if you were to write a script that needed to know if you're in a virtual env or not, you can look at this uh, environment variable. But as far as I know, there isn't really much software that needs this variable. And the last thing that it does, and this is really the magic of virtual envs, and this is kind of how they work, is it puts the path to that bin directory on the beginning of your executable search path. And so that's what that's what this is. Uh, so if I ask like which Python we have, Python, you'll see that it points at the Python inside the virtual environment. Whereas when I'm outside, um, oh, well, I don't actually, <laughs> let's, let's use which Python 3. Uh, I don't actually have Python 2 uh, as an executable here. But you'll notice here, like inside the virtual env, it points at the virtual env's Python and outside the virtual env, it points to the system Python. And the same is true for VM. Like if you want to activate a VM virtual env, you can use source virtual env bin activate, and that'll activate that file. This is different on Windows, however. Let me open up a command prompt. Uh, sure, we already have a virtual env there. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll just make vmv2. Oh, that was super fast. Why was that so fast? Oh, because it didn't do anything. Oh, I know why. Because <laughs> on Windows, Python 3 will try and open the Windows Store. But anyway, if we do this, uh, this will create our vmv here. It's weird the Windows Store thing didn't pop up. Anyway, and in Command Prompt, it's different than on POSIX platforms. And the directories are also different, which is a little bit annoying. So on command prompt, there's no source, there's no uh, there's no source or dot command. You just run the activate script directly. And instead of the bin directory, there's a scripts directory. I find this super annoying and I hope it gets fixed someday, but for now, <laughs> there's nothing you can do. Uh, but you just run this bash or batch script, and that'll do a similar thing to what um, to what the activate script does. And you'll notice here that it puts the scripts path on the beginning of the path. But anyway, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna continue with command because the rest of it is the same. Uh, that's just the first, the, the only difference. Um, all right, so let's talk about the next thing. So now that I have the virtual env activated, I can install whatever package that I want and it'll install into that virtual environment, but not globally onto my machine. So if I were to install like pre-commit for instance, uh, you'll see that it installed it into VM one lib site packages, you'll see that these are all the packages that I just installed. So you can see like config v and pre-commit and yaml and all the other packages. So it's installing it only into this separate isolated environment and it's not polluting my system. And that's the magic. That's, if you take nothing away from this, virtual ems are slightly magic and uh, allow you to install isolated stuff. Uh, so let's talk about why uh, or what the differences are between VMV and virtual env and why I tend to prefer virtual env. Virtual env. Um, so the, the first, I mean, the first plus for VMV, because there, there are pluses, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to say all bad things about it. Uh, the first plus to VMV is it ships with Python. Uh, so generally you can rely on it being available, except some operating system packagers decide to split VMV off into a separate package. And so sometimes it won't be available. Uh, so this is both a blessing and a curse uh, <laughs> at the same time. Uh, if you're on a Debian based platform, such as you know Debian or Ubuntu, uh, you'll have to install a separate package. And that package is called uh, Python 3-VMV, or if you're using a versioned uh, Python package, such as like the, the Pythons that come with that snakes, you'll use Python version number dash VM. Uh, actually, this one is from, this isn't Python, but this is from the Python 3.9 package that I've produced. Um, so you have to install this separate package, otherwise it won't, the, the VM module will not be available. So that's one downside, but also a plus side. Uh, the other advantage, well, we saw the speed advantage before. Uh, the other advantage to virtual env is it works with Python 2. Uh, if you still have to support Python 2, so not a, not a big plus, but it still works with Python 2. Uh, whereas the VMV module was introduced in, I want to say Python 3.3. Uh, and so, you know, it's kind of a Python 3 only thing. And the last like main difference between virtual env and VMV is VMV doesn't allow you to cross the versions, which 
It's kind of hard to explain, but like if you're running VM with Python 3.8, you can't use that to make a Python 3.7 virtual environment or 3.9 virtual environment. Uh, you can only create same same versioned virtual ends, whereas virtual env can you know cross. And the the main like the main reason for that is um, Python 3.8 ash vm this vm uh, executable doesn't really have all that many options. Whereas if you wanted to make one, so let's say we wanted to make a Python 3.9 virtual env, you would do virtual env vm. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. And you'll use dash p python 3.9 and this p is uh, use this particular python version and you can see like i was able to create a 390 beta 1 virtual environment um but yeah i think that's all i have to say about virtual ends. they're really great uh <laughs> i would i would suggest using them all the time um but yeah if you have anything else you guys want me to explain leave a comment below or reach out to me on various platforms but Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.